Dude, like, whenever you're younger, like, have you ever, like, wrote down, like, some words or something like that? And, like, do you, like, do different types, like, of the letter, like, different ways? What the hell are you talking about? Try to, like, make your signature fancy, or what do you mean? No, it's like, with the A, I usually, like, do a regular A. And, uh, or, like, sometimes I do, like, that kind of A. You know, like, uh, that song. Oh. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, the police have no idea what they're getting into with this suspect. Get ready for a wild ride. This is David Anselmo. He was the last person to see his friend Troy Wilcox alive. That's a verified fact. As David, Troy, and two friends were all hanging out at Troy's house one night, with the two friends reporting to the police that they had gone home, leaving David and Troy alone. The next day, Troy was found shot dead in his home. As far as everyone's alibi goes, the only possible culprits were David and Troy himself. But the gunshot wound and the bullet trajectory were found to be inconsistent with Troy pulling the trigger. Thus, the spotlight is on David. But David has already made it clear to his friends and the police that when he left Troy's house, Troy was still alive. Therein lies the dilemma. All evidence points to David, but said evidence is all circumstantial. Actually convicting David would be an Everest level uphill battle. And so the Wausau Police Department decided to play the ace up its sleeve. It called in two off-duty detectives, Lieutenant Jennifer Holtz and Lieutenant Nate Stetzer. Having worked together throughout their careers, Lieutenant Holtz and Lieutenant Stetzer have a deep understanding of each other's interrogation style and work synergistically. If you're familiar with the good cop, bad cop routine, you can understand why two detectives in an interrogation room can be more effective than a single interrogator. But being called in suddenly and with scant information on the crime, these two had little time to develop a game plan. They're gonna have to wing it with Rocky Rambo Way Nomcom 2.0 here. Let's watch them work. Hey David, Hello. how are you doing? I'm doing good. How's your McDonald's? I'm really not really know what it is. You what's that? I would thought I wanted a fish fillet, but now I think about it now. I'll take a couple bites. Yeah. Don't want the fish fillet. We were just at McDonald's, and I'm really regretting the fact that I didn't get to any McDonald's. What? What's cold in this room? I'm just gonna chill out in here, Malda. Kind of over some more information, so I think Detective Holtz will be right back with you. So I'm just gonna hang out with you for a little bit here. So you guys, do you guys come here from? Florida? Is that what? Why did you come here? It's warmer in Florida. Well, um, my auntie had custody of us. Okay. So before my sister had moved up here, mm -hmm. it was um me and my little sister with her. Okay. And after that, I went to Rio. So when I ride out, mm -hmm. I don't know how long until she ended up bringing us up here. Okay. Yeah, and that's because. Her and Jerry ended up moving up here. Okay. So then she ended up like bringing us up here. Yeah. Okay. She's now has custody of us. Got it. Got it. I don't know if anyone should choose to come from Florida to Wisconsin. It's freezing here. <laughs> it's freezing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't get the like. I don't. I don't understand the weather here. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think anyone's it's unpredictable. I've lived in Wisconsin my entire life and. Still it. it can snow, rain, and sunny all the same day. Yeah. I mean, you know, like thunderstorm when it's snowing. Yeah, I think I had it. I just live in California. So. So is that thing beeping all the time? It beeps to let me know it's on, and then it beeps again when the battery is getting low. So I know there's a way to like turn the beeping down, but I don't know how to do it. So it gets quite annoying, but that way at least we know it's on. Yeah. So, but it's it's annoying because when we look back at our video, um, like if we're typing reports, we can hear the beeping on it. So sometimes it beeps and you don't hear the person but. But they're pretty nifty. Mm -hmm. They're pretty nifty.
Do you always get the fish fillet in the other McDonald's? I don't know. I think that's it. No? Big Macs are my favorite. Not <laughs> grandma always gets those sheets. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, I can eat like two of them. It's the thing. How old are you? 18. 18. So you just graduated? Mm-hmm. Not yet? Okay. <laughs> I was going to school. And I stopped going to school. Why did you say going to school? A lot of different reasons. A lot of different people in the What school were you going to? Uh, West. 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 <clears throat> yeah, school has adults in I wouldn't go back to high school if you paid me. What do you want to be when you grow up? Did you go to college? Mm-hmm. Did you want to go back to, to college? Um, yes and no. Like I wish I worked full time during college, so I didn't get to really experience college. I guess because I was always working. Um, and I think if I didn't have to work full-time when I was in college, I would have done a lot. I had good grades. I think I would have done, like, really good. Um, and I think I would have I, I would have been able to play sports and do, like, fun stuff. Yeah. So, like, I would go back for that. Um, but I wish I would have done, instead of a four-year, I wish I would have done just a two-year. Save myself some money. So you could actually do two years instead of four years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. I wish I would have just done a two year instead of done instead of a full four year. College is expensive. I thought four years was like, you know, like mandatory or something. Mm-mm, not at all. Depends what you're going, what job you want. I mean, some jobs only need four years or even a master's degree, but you can get a really good job, a really good paying job with just a two year degree. And you save a ton of money. It was fun learning too. Oh my gosh, classes were fun. Got to do a lot of cool stuff. Play school. I would have graduated, but I just didn't go. Mm-hmm. How much do you have, if you wanted to graduate, what do you all have left to do? Um, really just. My um, it's called GPA. I think. Mm-hmm. No, get that. Yeah. You can see if you finish it, you're done. Not like you have to do it again. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. Okay. I did want to be a firefighter. Mhm. Yeah. It's growing up, just like other different things I was to do. I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was a kid. A what? A veterinarian. Oh. Like a vet, but... No. I'm sorry. You're young. You can change your mind. But you gotta finish high school at some I was gonna go to uh, NTC, mm-hmm. but yeah, I went to the school first to check like what I could have done, mm-hmm. and then I went to NTC and like they had me take a test. Yep. And so I took it. I I thought I did pretty well. Mm-hmm. And then you know, they were saying like, no, uh, it's not gonna work. Oh really? I'm like what? Was it like a placement test or to kind of see where you? Yeah, it's like a placement test. Yeah. 
I, I was like answering the questions like all confident and everything mm-hmm. and what's it called that there are some questions that like make your mind confused and everything yep and I was like I'm gonna go with my instincts I'll go with mm-hmm. this one now yeah but the nice things about those you could take them again can you? Not sure you can I thought it was just like a one time thing no no you can take them again cause you gotta get into school somehow right I mean, I had to, I'm terrible at math, terrible at it. Um, when I went to college, I had to take a math class that didn't even count in order to get into like a low level math class in college. That, that's how bad I math it. Like that's, like, sometimes you have to do that unnecessary crap to get where you want to be. But I'm still bad at math, but yeah. that's why I became a cop. So I'm good at math. I don't even like that. No, math is dumb. Math is stupid. I'd probably rather learn history instead of math. Mm-hmm. But although, whenever I'm sitting in class and talking about history, I just end up going to sleep. Cause yeah. it's like, you know, it's like a storytelling. It's like stories. Yeah. yeah. Especially, like, I would sit in the back, so then I'm like, listening, listening, and then like, you will have to, like, the lights, a couple lights off. Yep. And then I was like, okay, nap time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. listen, let me just, Close my eyes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I always with my eyes closed. Yeah. I know, that's how I was in psychology. I like psychology, like I like learning about psychology, but I can't stay awake in psychology. And you yeah. this one time I was in history, mm-hmm. and I was pretty tired. I had my head down, but I wasn't like, you know, going to sleep. So I was still listening and everything. And that time I had like a, a strict teacher mm-hmm. and she's like hey David I was like yeah she's like can you repeat everything I just said mm-hmm. so I repeat like everything yeah, that she yeah. said and she's like okay I'm okay. like can I put my head back down <laughs> she's like she has to take it and she's like no no I'm like no I'm scared task but man Teacher called me up. It's like, dude, come solve this problem. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, I'm gonna do it on my paper first. And yeah. She's like, no, we need you to come do it now. So I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. I go up there. And I was just like standing in front of the board looking at the the question. I was like, okay. I was trying to do the math problem in my head instead of like writing everything out yep. on the board. So then I'm like, I look back at everybody else. And then like, one of my buddies, like, like showing me the answers, so I was like, I looked back and I was just like making it seem like I was solving the question. So I was doing that. And then I put an answer on it. like, looking she's like, why didn't you try to solve it if you didn't even like finish solving the whole problem? Yeah. And then just wrote down the answer. And like, because so like, ended up remembering the answer. Like, you know, I can actually like see it, you know? Yep. <laughs> uh, whenever there was like a math problem, like if I had to do it on the board, like I panic. Because like it like it all gets jumbled and I can't yeah. focus on it and I just panic and it all bears. A lot more pressure once you like up there. Oh yeah, and then I really just don't like something and like trying to do math in front of people. No. We we're talking school oh. and math. Oh, math is dumb. I <laughs> so. I can't. I can't. And math is stupid. Good. Um, actually, we're winding up. Cold in this room. I just got my vest. I'm pretty sure you can still see the vest. The vest sweat? Don't mind. No judgment. You anything, boss? Uh, I know I'm good. Right. He's second guessing his fish sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What smells? <laughs> I was just telling him, like, I was just at McDonald's and didn't get anything, and I'm regretting it. I poke. He was second guessing his fish sandwich choice. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, it's not that. It, like, it's good, but. And then I had, like, this taste of onion, and I don't like onion. Oh. So then, like, I took another bite, hoping that it would be no onion taste. No, it's still there, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. All right, you good? Yeah. Cool. Well, Dave, it was fun to chit chat. Okay, finish high school. Oh, I won't. I'll, 
come back to it and think about it. Alright. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have a couple things to go over. I think that we've already discussed. So, like your cell phone, I need to do another one of those forms that we did at your house um, for that phone. This kind of a formality. Scooch on up here. Four frames. So when you first started off your a regular cup? Yep. So whenever you work your way up to a detective, you like, is there like a certain amount of being a cop or bus or arrest and stuff like that? Um, you have to have a few years then before you can put in and then it's a selection process. So they, they look at your past work history and whatnot, and yeah. take a lot of things into consideration. So this one is for your cell phone or smartphone. And you said it's Wi-Fi only, right? It's not connected to a cellular provider. So that's the ZTE. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, so it's the same thing with this. Um, you understand that you have the right to refuse consent and to revoke consent at any time. And what that means, like, that you can contact me at any time and say, hey, you know what, I'm not okay with what you're doing with this anymore. You can then, okay? Um, but usually you just gotta get the video, so it's like, okay. Yeah. Is that okay with you still? Yeah, with the video, yeah. Okay. So, you understand that you have the right to refuse to consent to search and refuse to sign this form. You prefer to state that no promises, threats, force, or physical or mental coercion of any kind has been used against you to persuade you to consent to the search or sign this form. The aforementioned property is owned and nor rented by me or otherwise legally owned by you give this officer or his or her designee permission to remove any contraband so it does obviously we're not gonna remove anything from your home. What it does is it copies it just so we can look at it in more detail. You can test and you know, figure out exactly what time that particular video was taken and anything related to the party last night is what we're interested in. Okay. I mean, did you text anybody while you were there? Or did you uh just the people that were gonna come over? Okay. So kind of just people as they were making arrangements to get there kind of yeah. thing. Did you text anybody after you left? I mean, to the party. Okay. Do you have any questions about this? No. So, and to answer your question about when you might expect to get it back, it depends what I find on there. It depends what's there. If there's something that's super important that's going to change things a little bit. If there's something on there that you know, for example, just throwing it out there, there's like a video of the incident. Yeah. You know, obviously that's important. Um, and we would need to keep your phone potentially for an extended period of time if that were the case. So it really depends what's there. Does that make sense? And again, your code is, was, is your fingerprint or the letter L? Yeah. And that's your phone. Oh. Yes. Date was six seven. Yes, sir. Eight thirteen p.m. Yeah.
Why don't you get all your ones like that? Oh, because like, you're supposed to have one fancy one, don't you know? What? Yeah. That's well, no, I, don't, I didn't know. <laughs> I mean, it would have been a lot more slower if they were all the same. Right. Well, a little less exciting. I can't be too flat. <laughs> you know? Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you for was um, DNA. So obviously what we do at crime scenes is we take evidence and have it tested to see um, whose DNA might be on it. And DNA can be transferred by touching. It can be transferred by things like saliva or semen. Um, obviously we wouldn't expect to find anything like that there. But what we'd be looking for in this situation is that um, touch DNA that might be on any pertinent evidence. Um, so. With that, I'd like to get your sample if you're willing to provide that to me just to compare it against the evidence that we collect. All right. Are you okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Yet another form. All that paperwork, right? Really. And I keep reading how to spell your last name, so I, it's a good thing that I got the other ones right here. Are you going to remember it's A and S and then O? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Do you have any nicknames or anything like that? Well, my sister calls me Dave. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty basic one. Yeah. Nothing other than that? Yeah. What did Troy call you? Huh? What did Troy call you? Dave? David. David? So this is just, it's called a buckle swab. So what I'll do um, when we're ready is just take the swabs out of the package and just swab the inside of your cheeks. Have you had this done before? Um, for? It's part of like your probation or anything. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And last I just rub the inside of your cheeks and collect some skin cells from there. Um, so same, this form is the same. You understand that you don't have to consent. You have the right to refuse, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You do any. See, now you forgot how to spell your own name. Okay. Yeah, I'll put the uh, an N behind the D, so I'm like, oops. Zero six zero seven. Eight sixteen. Whenever, like, whenever you're younger, like, have you ever, like, wrote down, like, some words or something like that, and, like, you, like, do different types, like, of the letter, like, different ways? To try to, like, make your signature fancy, or what do you mean? No, it's like, with the A, I usually, like, do a regular A, and, you know, or, like, sometimes I do, like, that kind of A, with a you know, like, a at sign. Oh. Do they still teach cursive in school? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. But I don't know if it's, like, different types of school that do that. Okay, just gonna grab the side first. You don't go for the U? No, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. I don't want you puking in here. It's really bad. Why couldn't you just, uh, what is it called? Oh, they're all different, right? Okay. All these, they're all different? The forms are different, but I, I just have them, I kind of aim them, but I like to have one separate one for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say, like, yeah, I could just, like, have it, like, you know, on the same sheet. They just like, like, all different types. Yeah, I just like to see the wrong, you know? And this last test, David, this is important because we kind of discussed it back at your house that um, you haven't shot a gun recently, right? So there would be no reason that gun shop residue or anything would be on your hands, right? So what I'd like to do is just to prove 
what you're saying is true and accurate that you weren't there when when Troy died. There's a gunshot residue collection kit that we take. It involves taking swabs from the tops of your hands, the palms of your hands, in between some index fingers and things like that. And then we're able to test that right here. And within a fairly short period of time, we should be able to get some results back. Because what happens is those particles, even though you can't see them with the naked eye, once we get them under a certain light, you can see them quite clearly and they actually fluoresce a little bit. So do you have any problem with doing that today? Well, it's just tamper resistance to show that this is the first time that this was opened, so. That's a pretty specific instruction, so. You have to take one swab from each area on your hand. And then we just put a couple empty swabs in, and that is a control. We'll check this first, obviously. Best way to do it. So, first ones we're going to do are the control. That's just going to be the, the blank one, just to show that there's no contamination. I think those ones might be you too. They might be me. They do. Maybe not. I'll just twist it. <laughs> the feet in it of itself. So what do you use the uh, fish board? Pretty much anything I can get. I'm not, I'm not like a, a, a huge fisherman. It's more of an excuse just to get out and jail for a little bit, but it's also no fun standing on the side of the lake though either. So can't go to the but yeah. But if you know any good mechanics, then for Vic's float and boats. <laughs> was it a rowboat or does it? No, it was like, it was a hundred and 20 horse Johnson on the back of it. It's a fish ski boat right to the bottom of the lake. That is a bummer. Right? That was a bummer. So you said it rained and then ended up sinking? Yeah. This so it was tied up to a dock and it must have rained enough that it filled up and nobody pumped it out and it sank enough that the weight, the weight of the boat was too heavy so it started to tip the pier for the, the, uh, the dock. Yeah. And then it just eventually just sat on the bottom of the lake. There was like that much of the motor sticking out. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, 
Old leg jackets were floating around. I bet there's a lot, what? Lures out there. Yeah. I'm sure. Something nobody steps out while they're swimming or something. Yeah. I had one of my uncles. He was like swimming and then, you know, getting hooked with a catfish hook. You know, like catfish hooks are like, you know, yeah, twists don't come out. <laughs> like he had it like underneath like his toe. Yeah. So like you know how your toe bends up and down. Yeah. Well, it was like hooked in there. So then like my grandma was like, here, here, I'll get, I'll get it out, I'll get it out. And my grandma, she's like old school, so she like tries to pull it out even though like I don't even know if she did know or doesn't know if it doesn't know that, like, you know, part of the hook thing. Yep. That, like, you know, makes oh. it hard to pull out. So then, surgery or what? No, she ended up, like, getting it, like, halfway out. And then she told her son, like, all right, get ready. She's like, get ready for what? <laughs> she yanked it. Ooh. It was just probably, like, I don't know, like, probably, like, a centimeter of skin. Really? Got kind of, like, ripped off to the side. Ain't too bad, though. Yeah. It could be a lot worse. I've seen some of those get no. some one once, and I can never admit this in public, but my uh, I have a twin that works here also, and we were fishing when we were really little, and I went back to go cast, I caught him in the corner of the eye, oh. right here. And then, uh, yeah, we're uh, no <laughs> close to it, but yeah, right in the corner of the eye, we can call an ambulance by the Eau Claire River Dam there. And <laughs> right hand. Yeah, uh, what's it called? My brother was fishing with, uh, I think, like, one of the hat families and stuff. Yep. And what's it called? Freaking, he ended up getting, like, hooked, like, in the eyelid. Ooh. Like, in the middle. Like, I was, like, I was there, but, like, you know, I wasn't, like, really there mm-hmm. when it happened. I just ended up seeing it, like, you know, like, with the fishing lure. Like, it was, like, a crankbait. Whoa. So it was just like dangling and like on his yeah. eye, like, oh. I'm guessing like, probably the only way to get it out is you gotta go in there, cut out the side, and pull it out, huh? You can't really yank on it to pull it out. Yes. Yeah. Just... I, I think what they did was like cutting the hook one side mm-hmm. so they can end up putting it out like the other way. Yeah. You no, know, like trip and stuff like that. No, thank you. Yes. Doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> I mean, it's like a bunch of funny stories that you ever had whenever you go fishing. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And what's it called? Um, this is one, uh, like, I don't, I think it happened like last year. Um, we were like out camping mm-hmm. and they pulled out uh, the canoe. And I think it was just two people that were on it. And they went out to the lake, they're fishing and stuff. And like, I don't even know how they get it, like, recording, but you see them, like, tip it over. <laughs> the whole canoe tipped over, and they're, they're just like, they're standing in the middle of the water, and like, oh, <laughs> That's the worst, though. I mean, you don't plan on going in the water, and then all of a sudden you end up in the water while you're fishing. That's no fun. Yeah, that's no fun. That was my coordination. I mean, that's my coordination's more fun. Jerry had my, oh, let's call it fishing. And it was like the ice was already melting, mm-hmm. so then like there was still like, there was still ice like on like the edge of the water, and he ended up like walking on the ice. He like you know he walked out there. He had his phone, and he ended up breaking through the ice. Really? Yeah. With his phone, he comes home, and he ends up grabbing like so much rice and throws his phone in there. Like, what are you gonna do with the rice? Like, oh, the phone's sitting in there. Really? Like, oh, why? She like he like. Oh, I fell in the water. <laughs> but yeah. Hmm. That's a tattoo? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, uh There's a meaning for it, different meaning. But it's like, you don't know? No, I did know, but like, I forgot. It's like. I don't know. I forget. Yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> Are you left handed or right handed? I am. Um,
But the worst part about fishing is catch big fish and then a game warden walks out. Uh, <laughs> so the game warden walks out. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it could either be that too. But, uh, it's either losing it, like while you're bringing it onto the boat, or holding it, but then losing it and not getting a picture of it. That's true. Yeah. And so are you a selfie kind of guy? Take yeah, pictures. Sure. Take pictures. <laughs> but uh, there's uh, one time uh, Jerry's brother, yeah, his brother, and he caught a pike. And the pike was like, probably like half the size of the table, or like probably this thing right here. Yep. And just a call out. They brought it up. <laughs> they were going to take a picture of it. But they didn't because they ended up like flopping off and then they didn't want to like, you know, try to grab it yeah. like not even by the mouth or like, you know, under the gill. Right. Yeah, it's freaking it was just like, Oh dude, what the hell? <laughs> like, why'd you let it go? Like, <laughs> why would you want it tight? Right? No, there's there's still the power on those things though. Yeah, there is. Pretty strong. Especially if you don't want to get bit by them too. Wait. Yeah. You're watching uh you ever seen River mm-hmm. Monsters? Yeah. We were watching that, and uh, he like I don't remember what I think it was halibut he was trying to catch. Oh, what? and uh, the, he just let it chomp on his hand, and you could see like the blood coming out of his glove as he was letting his halibut chomp on his. Well, was it? And then said it was a halibut. I think that's what it was a halibut. But it was uh, so there was uh, the whole story was that there was these locals that were fishing a river, yeah. and their boat sank. And they swam out there, I think it was the next day, to go get the boat out, and they got bit by this six foot helmet. So we went to go catch it to prove it was, to see or not if it was a helmet. He caught one. Do you usually watch that show? Not really. Not really? I don't really have time to watch a lot of TV, unfortunately, but usually when I do, though, it's usually the outdoor channel. There's this one episode where he went to a uh, Chernobyl, Chernobyl or something like that. Right, yeah. That one place is like, you know, mm-hmm. the ended up exploding stuff. And, you know. It's a great HBO series too, if you get a chance to watch it. The it's HBO like, series? Yeah, it's only like six episodes, but it's pretty good. There's a movie where it was like a, uh, I shouldn't say a horror movie. It was like, like a zombie movie mm-hmm. that was made there. Really? Yeah. It's, I actually forgot what it like actually all about, but it's pretty good. Hmm. Have you ever shot a gun? Huh? Have you ever shot a gun? Yeah, when we had went camping. Okay. How long ago was that? Oh, typically at least last year. Last year. All right, I'm going to go run and give this to Are you done with your um, McDee's? How much do you want to save for later? You can save it. Did you have any other fish sandwich? Huh? Did you have a fish sandwich? Did I have it before? Is it good? It's right now, it was okay, but once I got the onion taste, I'll like, <laughs> I don't want to get that taste anymore. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to grab a sweet one of them. We'll be right back. A what? I'm going to grab a sweet one of them. We'll be right back.
Yeah, I forgot the haze. Do you have to use the bathroom, Andy? Probably good. Here that ass. So does uh does Jerry have a boat? Uh no. He is a canoe. Oh yeah? Yeah. Where do you guys normally put in? What do you mean? Like where do you where do you land it? Uh sometimes either top of Scopio or the bottom of Scopio down. Hmm. Um where else? Up Morris. Uh, Black Oak. I don't know if you heard it. Uh, that is that the lake? Black Oak. I think so, or just like I think that's the name of it. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Right. I, I still think like, we're going to back off. Alright. I just have some follow up questions for you, and just to so work clear. You you understand that you're under uh, arrest right now, right? The door is shut for privacy only. Yes, we brought you down here, but if you'd like a ride home at any time, you just have to say the word. Right? Okay. We're just trying to get to the truth of the matter, obviously for Troy and Troy's family's sake. So. A common interrogation strategy to loosen a suspect's lips is to tell that suspect that he's not under arrest. While it is often true that a suspect is not under arrest, in many cases the suspect will be arrested should he attempt to leave. But in this case, David is truly not under any threat of arrest. The police simply do not have enough evidence with which to arrest him. David has no pending criminal charges with regard to the death of Troy, so if David sticks to his story, the police will be forced to release him. It's very important to us when we take our job seriously, so I appreciate your cooperation and coming down here and doing everything that you've done so far. I know it's kind of an inconvenience, but it goes a long way. So we appreciate that, certainly. So let's talk a little bit more. And let's, I mean, let's just for the sake of argument, say that you fibbed before about any one of these details. And I, I told you before that this is the last time we would have a conversation where you would be allowed to, to change anything you wanted to say or anything like that. But let's make that now. I just want to go over some of the details again, um, and I know it's probably really redundant and annoying, but it's important, like I said. Yeah. I'm sure Troy would do the same for you if something happened to him. From David's verbal and nonverbal communication, Lieutenant Holtz has ascertained that David and Troy were actually good friends. She noticed David referring to Troy as his brother and smiling when talking about Troy. She also noticed David responding well to questions about their friendship. Hence, Lieutenant Holtz has decided to adopt a strategy of targeting David and Troy's friendship. So, tell me about Troy a little bit, I guess, to start. How long have you known him? Oh, no. Three years. Okay. So, when you lived down in Florida still? No. Like, I didn't know him until, like, I moved up here. Okay. okay. And how did you meet him? Uh, to, uh, Jerry, because it's, like, his uncle. Okay. But Jerry's related to Troy's family. Okay. And you guys have become close? Yeah. What do you say? Like, I'm, like, you... I'm like his uncle and like, like we we talked about it and stuff. He's like, okay, well, you're younger than me, so I'm not going to call you uncle. Like, come on. It's like, no, I'm just call you brother, okay? Like, okay, that's even better. Okay. So how old is Troy? Troy turned 19. Okay, so you're just a little bit older than you. Yeah. Because you turned 19 in a couple of days here, right? So, what was the reason for the party last night? Um, he texted me, he's like, what are you doing? Like, nothing. And then he's like, oh, he was like, he said that he was buying uh, shot glasses, you know, like a party cup. I'm like, oh, true. Well, like, he was thinking about quitting, uh, drinking because he wanted to lose, uh, not like try to take carbs in you know like so are you gonna drink more or no and he's like well I actually do because I'm like you know thirsty for beer so I'm like okay well before you like stop actually like not drinking I might as well let it be less than us drinking you know so then after that like I was gonna support him and stuff and we just ended up drinking and when I got there Kate was there and after that we just waiting for uh, Tyler. 
So, Caden, last name again is? Uh, Heller. It's Heller. And is he, like, part of your core group, too? Like, all the guys that were hanging out last night are, like, real tight. Yeah. Would you say? Hanging out on a regular basis? So the purpose of the party, just paraphrasing what I think you said, is that he wasn't going to drink anymore because he was trying to lose some weight and not consume carbs. Well, for me, it was just, you know, like, just drink for the night, you know. And then it was going to be, yeah. he was going to come back. Yeah. So what did you do yesterday before you went there? Yesterday I was just hanging out. I was watching my nieces and nephew. So like my sister got home. What time was that? My little sister ended up getting home like six PM? Yeah. And then what? And then we just I, I was at the house and then I ended up finding a ride to his house. And then From who went again? Jen Jennifer. Okay. So you contacted her via text or Facebook Messenger or something? Yeah, yeah. I messaged her, I texted her like, hey, what are you doing? She's like, nothing. So I'm like, oh, I need a ride. She's like, we're two choice. Does she live near you or? Oh, uh, no, I'm not sure. You but like, sure. whenever she said that she was on her way, she said that she'll be like there by like 15 minutes. Okay. So I'm guessing like they're either already driving because they have fishing boats. She was with uh, her boyfriend. They were going to go fishing. So I'm guessing they're like, you know, driving around or something. Okay. Did you have to give her anything for the ride or? No. So when you talk to Troy, do you talk to him via text message or Facebook messenger? What do you use? Messenger. Messenger. What's his Facebook name under? Uh, Troy? I'm not sure because like it can either be like he has it as uh, T, T E E or just Troy. Does he have more than one Facebook account? No, it's just one. What's his profile picture, do you know? Um, no, I can't remember. Okay. He recently changed that. Like, what, were you with him when he changed it? Mm. So you're talking to Troy and Jennifer via Facebook Messenger? Yeah. And you get him or get John to come in and give you a ride. Yeah. And then, did you bring anything over to Troy's house, or? No. Just you. Yeah. And your cell phone. And and you were wearing that hat. Yeah. So tell me again what you were wearing. I was wearing the uh, the gray joggers, and the mother shoes, and the uh, Trix red shirt. And the hat. In your gray shoes, right? Yeah. Ones that we have. Why did you think you were wearing that red damage shirt? Because last time before I left the house, I seen this shirt. It's the that shirt, and then that's what I thought. You know, I was wearing. Because the same thing. Where did you see it? In uh, the room, uh, Jerry's room. I went in there, uh, grabbed some deodorant, put some on. And then just, so it's Jennifer and her boyfriend in the car. Do you get stopped anywhere? We stopped at Triggs, but by, uh, the, uh, close by my house. The one at West End? Yeah. And what'd you get there? Uh, back of cigarettes. So did she. And then did you get any beer there or yeah. somebody else brought it? Somebody else brought it. So you get dropped off at, and then you just make that one stop. Then you go right to Troy's. Mm-hmm. And when you get there, oh, what time is it again? Like, close to being 10. Okay. So it's dark out. And you will, I think you said when you go there, do you do anything like not? Window, like you know which window is. Yeah, because like if I see the light on, I knock on the window, you know, and then you just be like, oh, what's up, you know? And I ask them, like, through the window, like, is the door locked? They say yes or no. Or and if it's locked, they'll call and lock it. So Caden was there already? Yeah. Do I have that right? Okay. And 
and you came in then through the back door. It was unlocked. Yeah, he told me, like, I asked him if it was unlocked. He's like, oh, I think so. Okay. And then you get in there, and had were Caden and Troy drinking already mm-hmm. before you got there? Okay. When does the beer arrive, or when does the party the arrive? Very, like, arrived, like, 11.15. Okay, so who brought that? And then, so Caden's there first, obviously. Troy's there first, but then Caden, and then you. Yeah. And then who? And then Tyler. And we were trying to get Ricky to come out. And then he ended up texting me. Oh, I'm not sure what time, but he ends up like asking me like scoop. So I was telling Tyler like, hey, you wanna go pick up uh, Ricky? And then he's like, yeah. So him. And Kaden went, and then, like, I was gonna go, but then, like, you know, I ended up staying in Troy, so he wouldn't be by himself there. And we we're gonna go for a uh, smoke a cigarette, and I told him, like, front or back, he's like, oh, it doesn't matter. And I was walking to the restroom, you know, like, joking with him. And, like, yeah. Well, I'm going to the restroom, because, like, you know, like, he had to go for number two. So I go outside, I told him I'll be outside, I was smoking, and then he ended up coming out. And we were just like waiting on them, and then they ended up pulling up when we were already inside. And we were just waiting on them. Okay. And they got there about what time? 10, 11 30? Something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, like around 11 45. You can say something around there. Okay. Is there something that helps you remember that time? Uh, depending on the time that he ended up sending a message. That's why your phone will be helpful to kind of establish that timeline, so we know. Alrighty. And then, so Tyler went and picked up Ricky. And then, who's going to be together? And then you all start drinking. Like, in, are you all in Troy's room or are you somewhere yeah, else? Sure. Was there anybody else home? Like, that was drinking with us? No. Like adults or other family members of Troy. Yeah, he said that they were sleeping. Okay. So were you trying to be quiet? Well, it didn't sound like we were being quiet. Well, yeah, smashing somebody's head into a wall in the kitchen is really very quiet. But nobody complained about you guys being loud or anything. Okay. So tell me about like what's going on when you're all drinking together. What's the topic of conversation there? Top it was just like, you know, like any regular other conversation, you know, conversation there, and then conversation over here, you know, back and forth conversation over here, and then conversation over there, you know, different types of conversations. Okay. And then at what point does the gun come out? Where does it come from? Well, um, Troy ended up like getting out of the closet. Where in his closet was it kept? Well, I'm not really sure. Like, I just, you know, like, I went to the restaurant. I came back and he was like standing by his closet. He was standing by his closet? Yeah. Was so that's like. Or anything or wrapped in anything? Or... No. Like, whenever I came back, he already had it in the sand and he was just like, you know, holding it up. And how long had he had that gun? I'm not quite sure. But you've seen it before? Yeah. And how many times before would you say? Like six times, three times. And like every time you're at his house, did he bring it out or? Not like every time, but like we drink and he talk about it and then I thought I'd like put it away. So then he's like, why? And I'm like, just cause, cause like, what if your little brother comes in here, you know? And then I don't end up like, you know, thinking something else, you know? And he's like, all right, fine. And that was whenever we had like a uh, 12 pack and we just drink a little bit. And it was like, if we're like wanting to drink more, So last night, specifically, what's going on with the gun? He pulls it out. Is that does it have the clip in it when he takes it out of the closet? Yeah, that's what I seen it, and then taking out the clip, like you know, like without the clip, it would like you know load it, like you know, like if it was the clip in there, you know, like just uh, what is it called? Wrecking the slide. Yeah. So, who takes the clip out? Uh, he did, and then. Uh, he was just doing that, you know, passing around, you know, looking at it and stuff, you know, like, 
pointing at it, you know, and everything else. And then after that, it was just, you know, like, random stuff. Because, like, you know, we ended up drinking more and stuff. So, define random stuff. What do you mean by that? Like, to do with the gun? Yeah, random stuff. Like, it's been this past. Is there ever any talk of like firing it or going outside or doing anything with it? Or... Yeah, I think about going like down to the, um, that one um, train bridge to go shoot it over there. Okay. And then like when we were outside smoking cigarettes, um, they were just like putting it up on this guy like let me just shoot it right now. No, you know, like oh don't do that. Everybody's gonna end up you know coming around and stuff. Did anybody shoot it? No. No. You're just talking about it? Yeah. But you had it outside with you when you were smoking cigarettes? I didn't have it outside, but like, Who did? They, they had it outside Good. with us. Okay. What's this way called pre So. Ah. It went off. Well, I went healing with halfway. I went all the way. Oh, okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Um. Did, who had it outside of them? Uh, Choi had it. Where was he holding it or carrying it? Uh, he had it, and we were just looking at him. He ended up like standing. We we're all standing, and he had it on like his hand. And he just like had it out, you know. And um, Ricky was telling him like, dude, put that shit away, nigga. He's like, why? You scared? I'm like, no, I just put it away. And then he ended up like clocking it back. And there was a bullet in the chamber, and then we all say like, "Dude, unload it." You know, take out the clip and unload it. And um, how did you know there was a bullet in the chamber? Because he ended up loading it with the clip inside. And we get um, what's it called? We told him to take it out. So then he did, you know. And Kaden was like out with the shirt, you know, all like coated and stuff. And then uh, I think it was Ricky that ended up like grabbing with his other like grabbing the bullet. That, like he ended up popping out. So I see you like demonstrating them by putting your hand in your shirt. Is that how they were handling it? Like with their shirt? Yeah. Okay. Is that what Troy did too? Not the gun, the bullet. Okay. Yeah. Why, they, is, why is that? Um, I don't know. They just said like, like, you know, like don't touch the bullet, you know. So I'm like, okay. Do you know why? It's not about like not leaving your fingerprints on it. That makes sense. Do you know if the gun was hot? Um, you no, know, not the, not to my knowledge. I guess what I'm asking is, is you know, obviously, most of the time people don't handle a gun by, or even a bullet yeah. by putting it in their shirt. So I guess I'm I'm just trying to understand why. Yep. But you don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But is that how? Everybody kind of handled it when they were when it was being passed around. Were people touching with their bare hands, or were they using like the gun, gun? bare hands, but the bullet? Was just oh, like, yeah. Like, yeah, not the bullet. Okay. And where was the magazine as this was going on? Huh? Where was the magazine itself on this? We were outside, like close to like the corner of the back house. Okay. And we were just there, and I think. After taking, uh, after Troy taking out the bullet, I think uh, Ricky had the magazine, and then after that, he ended up giving the clip back to Troy, and then that's when Ricky ended up reaching for the bullet, that one bullet that kid had. Okay. And then what happens? When you guys, I'm assuming you don't go out on the train bridge, or do you leave mm -hmm. the house at any time? After we finished smoking cigarettes, we went inside. Back inside. Okay. And then what? I just kept drinking, the gun was still out. Where was, was the gun out? It was like mainly on the bed on his like right side like where he had it. And then he'll pull it out time to time. You know, I had it like in his lab and then we were playing cards. So then like whenever like he would like stand up to grab a beer, we ended up putting it on this side or on his right side. Okay. So you were playing cards? Yeah. Okay. And then what happened? After that, we were just drinking, chilling, still like the same usual stuff, like, you know, drinking, talking, conversations. At what point is that video made that you posted on your Snap story? Uh, that was 
Was that after you guys got in from outside? No, that was uh, through whenever he ended up leaving. It was after Caden left, yeah. Mm -hmm. We went out to the kitchen and started playing for fun. And then, like, um, what was it? I don't know. There's, I don't know what it was, but um, Ricky was sitting on, sitting down on a chair, and Choi went up to him, and I was like standing like what, probably like, like being low like this length, and I don't know, like I don't know if it was the gun or like a phone, and Choi went up like let me see it. He's like no nigga, and like what you don't trust me, and then he ended up like punching that door where he like head butted the door, and like he punched it. He's like you don't trust me. Bust it again, but the second time, like, it wasn't, like, hard. And then, um, then, uh, I don't know what it was, but fucking, um, Troy ended up getting it and stuff, and then, like, Ricky looked at the door, because, like, nigga, look what you did. And then Troy's like, nigga, that's what you made me do. It's got like that, and all, like. You're not sure if they were, like, kind of, you know, it's no, they, they, about no. The, the phone, a phone, or the gun? Either one of those. I don't know. Yeah. Um, then he, we ended up looking at the, the hole that he made in the like the door. When he punched in it. the kitchen? Yeah. And then um, he ends up saying, like, dude, I'm going to show a bit out about this, you know? And like, Rick is like, you won't. And he's like, all right, bet, bet. And then that's when I took out my phone and then started recording. And then he did it. And then, like, after that, we were just laughing. And it was just you, Troy, and Ricky. And Tyler. But he was like on the other side of the table. Okay. And Caden had already left. So Caden was the first one to leave. Yeah. And did he have a car or how did he leave? Uh, he got picked up by his girlfriend. Okay. Like, what time was that? Do you remember? I don't know that it was all saying, like, using Troy's phone to, like, text her. Caden was? Does he not have his own phone? Or? Um, I think he does, but I don't think he added with him. What is his girlfriend's name? I don't know. So when this was all going on, when he was headbutting the, the door, I mean, did, did you feel as though it was a beef between him and Ricky, or just, no, it was just playful being drunk? Yeah. There is no argument about that. Like, you know, has there ever been a beef between anybody in that? No, no. So Caden leaves first, and then you guys do this headbutting thing, and then who leaves? Um, it goes Tyler to see, and I'm saying like, sipping a beer, and like, all right, I'll do this one. And then, since. Tyler was leaving. That was uh, Ricky's pride. So then after they left, we cleaned it up, the table and everything. And then, the yeah. And then we ended up going back to the room. It's like, all right, both let's get chicken. Like, I told her like I wanted like to go home so I can get ready for work. But then he's like, pussy. And I was like, all right, you know, let's drink. So we started drinking. And then after that, I just like. And then I tell him, like, dude, because he started remembering himself, like, dude, I don't want to hear this now, you know, it's stupid, you're stupid. Tell me about what he was reminiscing about. He was reminiscing about his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, you know, like, dude, it's been, what, three years now, I think? No, it was, like, probably two years, because whenever I got there, like, up here, he was dating her. It was, like, probably two years. He's like, so man, it's so fucking, you know, sad and stupid. Because she ended up leaving him for another guy. And like, while they were dating, I think, like, you know, he was telling me something about like, she's been seeing another dude behind his back. And he didn't want to believe that. I guess at what point does he, uh, puke? Uh, that was whatever everybody else was like, so that was before Caden left, even. Yeah, because okay. Ricky ended up like taking a shot, and then oh vodka. Yeah, straight vodka. Yeah, and then like Troy was the one that asked it, like you know, like 
when you like pour me up a shot, like when are you gonna pour me a shot? So they, then he did it. It poured, uh, he poured two of them, so they could both drink it. And then Troy took it. And then like after he took it, he got up and then went and go pee. He opened the window and puked outside. Yeah. Did you began after that? Mm, no. He did. It was just that one time that I said I'm about puke. Okay. So then, Caden's gone. Tyler and Ricky leave together because they're riding together, right? Yeah. Is there a reason you just didn't leave with them, or? Well, yeah, I could have, but I didn't like want Tyler to drive me back all the way, to, you know, up to my house and going back to uh, he lives. Like I think I know he lives somewhere like by there over there, like by the um that log company or whatever, like you know that bridge you go through where you see logs. All stacked up. Uh, on the west side? Or the east side? No, it was like... It was like going to, uh... Schofield, I think. That bridge that you gotta go over the... Are you talking like the paper mill? Oh. By, like where there's a big electronic sign underneath it? You're talking logs and not like... No, it was like... Or anything it was like that. logs, you know, stacked up logs. And... Like, I don't know. I don't even know what they do there. Is it by water? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I know he lives down, like, that road. Somewhere over there. But in school. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. So how long did you stay after Tyler when you left? After they left, I ended up staying, like, I'd say probably, like, 35 minutes. Because then, like, I ended up taking a shot. And then we were just drinking a couple more beers. And then... After that, like, that's just that's about thing to call him. How much did you drink, do you think? Like, how many beers? Beers, like, probably like 16, maybe, or less. How about Troy? Troy, I don't know. It's the same as you, would you say? Like, keep in pace with you for really well, or? Uh, I would say so, but, like, he was drinking out of a cup. He was drinking beer out of a cup or what? He, he was drinking beer out of a cup. Was he pretty intoxicated though? Yeah. Just based on your history of him? So then walk me through you leaving or, or telling him that you're going to leave. How does that go? Well, I told him, I'm like, bro, I'm go ahead and leave. It's like, why? You know, like, because I gotta get ready for work. It's like, you don't work tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, I do. It's like, alright, well, you be safe. So then I did, I started walking, and then, like, by that curve, you know, I ended up getting picked up by that, oh, uh, round too. Okay. And why didn't you call someone for a ride, or? Um, because it was already pretty late, and my phone was dead. It was dead. Time did it die? Um, I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't know. Because last time I checked it, it was like at 4%. So what did the scale look like that picked you up? It was white. It was like... Little body fat, I don't know. But his hair was like, you know, blonde. His hair was blonde? Long hair. And it was, uh, uh, like a sedan, a vehicle? Not an SUV or a pickup truck? No, it was just a regular car. Like car. Oh, what color was it? Blue. And what kind of vehicle was it? It was a Hyundai. Yeah, like, what else do you remember? Well, I mean, I don't know, like, the brand of the car or, like, anything else. I just know it was blue and it was Hyundai. Hyundai. Or however you say it. Can you say, tell you his name, or? Mm. What did you guys talk about? Oh, well, he was just like, where, where are you coming from? Like, oh, I'm coming from the other house. It's like, oh, true. Oh, true? Yeah, like, you know, oh, true. Like, where are you going? Like, you know, the usual. And I'm like, I know that he knew that I was drunk, because, like, I was kind of, like, slurring words. He's like, I'm big, I had, like, a fun time, like, 
Yeah, we did. Did he say he lived out by you, or...? No. He didn't really, like, say we were, like... I didn't even ask him, like, where he was going or anything else. He just, like... He just asked me that. And then... I, like, answered back. Did you just give him your address, then? Or did you give him directions? Yeah, I just gave him directions. But I didn't, like, let him, like, you know, drop me off in front of my house. So I ended up, like, having him, like, drop me by, like, the neighbor house. So it would have been... Why is that? Because it's a stranger, I'm not gonna like you know you don't like where I live, you know. Well, you've already been in the car with them for the last twenty minutes. You yeah, but you weren't worried then. <laughs> but I mean, there's a little difference there. Like, yeah, there is like you know like it could be like something else. But instead of like him knowing where I actually live, I didn't want him to know that. So I told him like it's right here. I live right here. He's like, all right. Got off. He took off, and I waited until he left so I can go to my house. And then what did you do when you got inside your house? I got inside and then put in my phone charge and then like, you know, go to sleep. Take a shower, change into your pajamas. No, I was thinking about taking a shower, but then I kind of like, you know, you know, until, because I was already like, you know, pretty tired and stuff. So what time do you think it was when you got home? Like four, probably four or five, close between there. So do you go to sleep right away? Well, I put my phone charge, and I checked their sweetie, and then I didn't find nothing, and I didn't want to like make something, so then I just went to bed. Was everybody home? Um. Yeah, I believe so, but I didn't check if everybody was home. Nobody but was I, awake. No, but I'm pretty sure everybody was like would be home. But you didn't check specifically. Yeah. How did you feel at that point? Because I know before you said that, you know, like the guy I was thinking why I was drunk. Yeah, because I was. Did like, you feel was... intoxicated, or were you intoxicated, or? Yeah, I felt intoxicated, and like you know, I felt like you know, tipsy and stuff like that. And then you go to sleep. Yeah, I have to put in my phone charge too, like checking if there was something. Didn't change clothes. No. Didn't change clothes. No, just the uh, this shirt this morning. So you slept in the red shirt and your tires. Did you take your shoes off and leave them on? Or? I did not. And then what time did you wake up today? I would say like eight, nine. I didn't check the time whenever I got up. I was gonna check it on the stove, but it was like before you said the time. It was like Couldn't you just look at your phone? Yeah, but while well, it was like I turned it on and then like I had to use the restroom and then it came out. My phone like it didn't turn on. And then I switched chargers and after that, you know, like So you were the first one up in the morning? So I like probably like, woke up before them. And then what did you do? Not that I just you know. Did you like, talk was, to anybody on your phone or no, I was waiting, waiting I was waiting for my phone to turn back on. Okay. Did you stay in your room at this at this point? So you wake up, how do you know everybody else is waiting in the house? Huh? Did you hear how how did you know everybody else or that people were waiting in the house? I was in my room and calling his name so so then they'll wake him up and after that and then just go into the living room and go out there. Right. So was the door open or closed at that point when you started hearing? My door was closed. Close. And then you go so you said you went out in the living room after that? Yeah. Who else? Who was out there? Just them two. Jerry was like on the couch on his phone. And then what? What else did you do today? After that, I just ended up uh, checking my phone. And you know, that's when I started hearing about Troy being dead. Who told you? 
guy, he said, like, he said, oh, it's Troy K. I was like, why? What's he doing? And I texted him. And then he said, uh, Kai told me, like, I heard that he's dead. Who's Kai? Um, his cousin, I believe, either cousin or uncle, uh, Richard's cousin. And after that, I started texting him, calling him and stuff. And then freaking home. That's when Kathy ended up calling me. And we were just talking about that and back and forth. And then we started getting ready. Whenever Jerry got home, I was already having the kids ready. So we could go. And that's why we got there. And then you and Jerry rode together over to. Yeah. We went to go drop off of uh, the kids at the auntie house. Okay. And then you got there. And everyone else was there. Who's Kathy? Kathy is his auntie. Right yeah. Did we have any conversations with Jerry about anything that had happened? No. Or because the night in general, did you talk to him about it at all? No. Because whenever I got home, everybody's already sleeping. And so, you, so you wake up in the morning. Did you say anything to Jerry or Jordan when you went out in the living room? Oh no, just like me. I would just like lay down on the couch and then ended up like going back to sleep but I took a nap and when I woke up and then I asked where's uh Jerry and they're like oh you went fishing and then I seen um she like this day's gonna take a swimming I'm like oh and then when you guys, the other time you were with him is when you guys were driving to his aunt's to go drop off the kids, right? Mm -hmm. Did you guys talk at all? No, we were just talking about, like, you know, like, um, he was telling the girls to sit back and put the seatbelts on. He was just, like, about, like, quiet, like, the whole entire there. Like, we didn't have, like, really much conversation. I guess not to be nitpicky, but I mean, so when you say we didn't have any conversation, but we had a little conversation, what does that mean? Like, we just talked about like, um, freaking where he went to go fishing and stuff. But like, other than that, it was just like me checking on the kids and like the pole, like he still had the pole in the back and like, it was between the like, no fixing that and I told her like to pull her seat forward and then to put it back and she did that and then Jerry looked back and like what and all like oh the ball's gonna crack because she was like in the middle between the seats like oh and then he told oh his girls like don't break the fishing poles and I told him about the tip because one of them of his fishing poles like the tip was broken and like I seen that it was fixed and I told him like oh you got it fixed He's like yeah um, how was he in the whole situation I don't know, just regular. I mean, do they appear distraught to you or, you know, I guess everybody handles stress yeah, I couldn't, day. like, I couldn't really tell what, like, what mood was he feeling and stuff. How about you? How did you feel? I would just, you know, like, I didn't want to hear about it, too. Nobody wants to hear something like that. Well, what kind of, like, do you have any emotions associated with that? I mean, sad, angry. Yeah, that's right. Like, and then, like, Jerry got home and I told her, like, dude, did you hear about Troy? And, like, he ended up, like, coming in. He's like, yeah, it's stupid, dude. And what did you hear about what happened to Troy? Just, uh, guy telling me that I heard that he was dead. And he said that I hope it's not true. So then I started texting him, uh, Troy. And then I was calling him, calling him, calling him. And then Kathy uh, called me. And then she was like, like, you know, what happened last night? And I'm like, why are we drunk? You know, like, why? It's like, and then that's when she told me that he's dead. And after that, I was just, you know, like, feeling like so emotional. And then freaking out. Know, she wanted, like, you know, she told me to go to Troy's house. So I was like, okay, well, right now I'm like, you know, with the kids and I don't have a car. She's like, well, send me your address. Um, I'm gonna send somebody over there. I don't know what she said, but 
that's when Jerry ended up coming in. And I like I asked him, like, dude, did you hear about Troy? And he's like, Yeah, it's stupid. And then that's when I texted back Kathy, like, you know, oh Jerry's here, like, you know, he's gonna like, you know, I'm gonna catch right with him. And when you say emotional though, I mean does that mean like sobbing, crying, like what is that? Yeah, all the sobbing is. anything about it so they were just like you know uh, you know like excited of like you know leaving the house going to their uh, like you know cousin's house and stuff like that and they, they asked me like why are you crying I'm like don't worry about it they accept that you know like so what are we going to find with that gonna I should be able to check here shortly it's processing now so it's gonna tell us what happened today and what happened last night what's it gonna show what is it supposed to show is it gonna show that you have gunshot residue in your hands how did your pants end up in Jerry's room which ones gray tigers those were Hello. So you said those were already in there? Yeah. Um, yes. So. I didn't. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying oh, to understand. Okay, so I'm not sure what you're talking about, about ma'am, but this is a commonly used room by many different officers. And you, so I you fell asleep you. and they so can drop your pants. I will let someone know. And you're ready to go. So how did. Okay, I'll let, let them know that he has the wrong number. Wait, are you talking about the ones that I had on? Yeah. Or are you talking about the other ones, the light okay. green? Okay. Got it. What happened with the ones, ones that you got? Those were the ones that you had grabbed for me. Whenever it's I had showing you. up on my caller ID right now. So why would the shirt okay. be there? It's his shirt. Okay. The All right. I will one. let her know. Yeah, but if you were wearing it. Okay. Thank you. No, I was wearing the uh, tricks one, the red one. I thought I was wearing the other one. So I'm sorry, the gray joggers ended up in Jerry's room how? The light ones, the light gray. Because uh, the ones that I had were like dark grayer. Okay. And the ones that oh, you found in Jerry's room, they were already there. How did they get there? I don't know, they always get so close. That's uh, the time whenever I had to shower, like, help with his bag. And like, I would just leave my clothes like behind the door and then either my sister or my little sister would like grab it and then throw it in the washer. They do like, their laundry for you? Huh? They do their laundry for you? Not all the time. It's like, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, like, the brand of clothes that's like here and they grab it, throw it in the low. You know. So if you mind going back a little bit, what was your relationship with, uh, I guess, from my understanding, you were over there quite frequently, right? And so, how, how would that normally look? We would either just like hang out and drink. You drink a lot with them? Is that, would it be safe to say that every time you hang out, you'd be drinking or what? Yeah. yeah. It's like the weekends or like something. Everybody? Yeah. Okay. And what would happen on a typical weekend? On what? On a typical weekend. How would that happen? Oh, would just like, I'll like text him, like, hey, like, do you want to drink? He'll say, like, yeah. Or, no. Bring up something for it, like if she got something to do. Right. And like, so you go there. We'll just use a Friday night, for example. What would that look like? Would you stay there? Would you leave? Would it kind of depend? What? Uh, usually, I like come over. Like I like probably like slept there like two times. But like, how long though? Like we're we talking over the three years or? Uh, no, it was just like probably like, the, no, not last week, but like the week before that. Okay. Did you have clothes or anything there? You're just gonna just, what you had on your back is what you slept in? And, yeah. Okay. And why would that, why, why would you stay there? Either I didn't feel like walking home or, you know, like 
I just might as well stay here and wake up tomorrow. How often would you walk home? Oh, uh, pretty often. Like, if I lived closer, like, I would walk every single time. But, like, now since I'm father, it's either, like, time to time. Where'd you live before? Uh, on Merrill Street, close to, uh, what is it? Um, Blue Willow, I think. God, it is. It's still quite the hike. Yeah. But Get your exercise in, right? I, I walk a lot. Especially in Florida, whenever my grandma, she would always like, tell me, like, come on, come with me. Just go here, and we just walk there. And then the other... I'm gonna go check on... Okay. So the other question I had too is you said that you checked your phone and we were at 4%. And then after that, you died. What time was that that you checked the phone? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember. But I guess were there... So did you check to see how much you had on your phone? Or was there a reason why you went on your phone? I guess that's... Well, do you want to try to say? Like, like you know, why, I, like, did I check, like, you know, what percent it was? Yeah. Well, I mean, I checked it because before, like, before it was, like, at 16%. And then I was playing music, and then I ended up checking it again, and then coming out to 4%. And then my phone ended up dying. And how I know, because I was playing music on my phone. Were you getting, like, the beeping or whatever that was dying or anything? It doesn't. Well, it does, but it only beeps, like, at 15%. Okay. And, I, like, it notifies me. And I've seen it. And then after that, it beeps again at 5%. But I didn't hear it because, like, you know, we're, I was playing music on, like, on my phone. Okay. But not just, like, on my phone. Like, I was connected to all Bluetooth. Okay. So this is my question to you. And this is going to be kind of personal, one, so I apologize, but I'm kind of curious. So what makes you tick? Huh? Like what makes you you? Like we're talking family, talking friends. You know, like for me personally, I can tell you right now, like I'm a total family guy. Like family is what makes me me. Okay. And from what I've learned in this job is that everybody has these unique. Like this is what makes me me, man. And I I get the feeling in talking to you that you kind of have the same. Same principles, like same like. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of feel like friends and family is kind of yeah, really the, important to you. The two things, yeah. Um, and so I can understand that this situation has gotten really difficult to be going through. Okay. Um, you know, I guess where we're at in our job is we have to take a thousand puzzle pieces, right? Uh, I'm telling you right now, like puzzles is not my thing. It's just an analogy, but like we have to take all these different pieces of information and put them together to get a whole picture okay and like you know every there could be different conflicting things that you know doesn't make sense in the puzzle and we have to be able to figure out where that piece fits to make that whole picture okay mm -hmm. and and in this picture we're talking friends and family right yeah. and that's why we're asking a lot of these questions is because we have to be able to put that puzzle together um, you know, I guess, do you have any doubt that that gunshot residue test is going to show anything? Like, what do you mean, doubt? Like, if it's going to come back positive or something? Yeah. No, it's going to come back negative. Okay. Is there anything you think we should know right now before we proceed? I don't know. Not if you got more questions. Well, not. Like, this is actually, it's not my case. I'm just kind of sitting along. Um, you know, I guess you, you seem like, you, in a way, you're kind of like me. I mean, like, like fishing, friends and family is, is really important to you. And, you know, your cooperation level has been great. You know, we really appreciate that. Because okay. like I said, sometimes it can be really difficult in our situations to take these different puzzle pieces and paint that picture, you know. So, but I gotta tell you, there's something missing. Like what? And I, I'm confused. You know, I guess I, I'm I'm struggling to understand how um, how this happens, right? Well, I want to know how how it happened. Have you heard anything? Like, 
about like other like stuff like like what I don't know, like have you heard anything about possibilities or what are your thoughts? I guess put yourselves in my shoes. Put yourself in my shoes once, right? You you are tasked with trying to figure out how this happened, not only for friends, but for the family that's going through this right now. Mm-hmm. For Jerry that's also going through this. What are your thoughts? I don't know. It would have been like all over the place. Like, my, my thoughts is just. You don't. You don't have any any ideas. Because I can tell you, you know, this for a long time. And and Jen has been doing a lot of night. And and like I already told you, there's some concerns that there's stuff that doesn't add up. And and I don't know what it is. And this is kind of why I'm asking for your help. Because, you know, before you told me you were really struggling with it and you were sobbing, and this is hard for you to deal with. I get it. But I feel like there's something that you want to tell me, and I don't know what it is. But there's no doubt that gunshot residue just even got to my hands. You know? Was fishing kind of a family thing? Big title. Is this going to mean a lot to Jerry? Huh? Is this going to mean a lot to Jerry? Is that going to disrupt fishing or anything like that? I mean, I'll probably go, but maybe like two weeks later or so. How does he handle stress? How do you handle it? I mean, I keep it personal and I just keep it to myself. Do you have a lot of family on your own? Around here? Around here and all. Back in Florida? So sister, if I remember right, we were talking out out there that sister kind of brought you here? Yeah. Why was that? Oh, that's... see the bus time and my sister my little sister kept uh, like, texting her like hey when are you gonna take us up there when are you gonna bring us up there and then you know I got a rehab it was like probably like, three weeks or so that she ended up bringing us up here you're a rehab for uh, marijuana you still use So when I was talking to Jerry, and Jerry told me that uh, when you came out this morning that you appeared to be really high. High. When was the last time you used? Last time, like, three months, two months ago. Just weed? Nothing mm-hmm. else? Have you ever dabbled in anything else? Huh? Have you ever dabbled in anything else? No, just weed. I used to smoke. Your Glock? What do you think? Because from my understanding, there's kind of a concern of your mouth drinking. What? Your mouth drinking. Do you feel like it's a problem? Drinking? No, not a problem with it. You feel like Drinking played a factor in what happened? Huh? Do you feel like drinking had played a factor in what happened? Like a large part or? Like drinking a lot? No, right now. Drinking a lot right now, like, do you think if the alcohol wasn't there, that things would be different today?
David, we've kind of had a chance to to talk to everyone else who's been interviewed. Everyone else who's at the party has been talked to. Um, there's things that you're saying that that are inconsistent, and they've been inconsistent throughout the day. There's things that other people are saying, other people are wondering, um, because you were the last person there. And nobody else is saying that he wanted to hurt himself or anything like that. Where we're at is Troy's family needs the truth. And you are part of his family. He called you his uncle or nephew. You guys were close. Okay. And what I believe happened is was a tragic accident that you didn't mean to happen. But I know that what happened to Troy didn't happen from anybody else. Nobody broke into the house and did anything like this to him. And I can tell based on the evidence up there that he didn't do this to himself. So I need you to look deep into your heart and give Troy's family the truth. Because Troy would do that for you. get through this, all right? And I know you're scared, and I know you're sorry. But I need to hear it from you. Okay, you need to know. No, we haven't. It's just you know, you haven't needed it. Something bad happened in there. And you didn't mean to do it. I'm sure you didn't. I know you didn't. I can tell you're not a bad guy. And I need you to tell me about it. Do you know the truth? Yes, you do. I can see that this is killing you, and you're going to have to carry this with you. But you can absolve yourself here by getting this off your chest. Let's take it off my chest. I can see it in that vein in your neck. I can see it in everything about you, and I can see that you want to tell the truth. But you don't know how. You have to do this for Troy. Troy didn't kill himself. that test we did, it shows that you fired a gun. Yes, you did. It's clear as day, dude. Clear as day. Well, could I see the test? It's in evidence right now. This is a lie. In fact, it's all a lie. Not only is the gunshot residue test not in evidence, but there was no gunshot residue test. The Wausau Crime Lab doesn't even run gunshot residue tests. The residue test kit that you saw Holtz perform on David was just a prop. In a rare sign of intelligence from David, he called Lieutenant Holtz on her bluff. But Holtz fires back quickly, covering her ass with the it's an evidence lie. If I hadn't watched David flap around like a fish out of water for several hours before recording this video, I might even call this exchange a battle of brilliant minds. Instead, I'll call it a fluke. Oh, shoot it straight. Yeah. Emotion. Pants, I got other drinks for me. You know what kind of blood that was? Terrible blood. Why? That was, I had cut up. 
a while back before one of the brothers had went to California. But this is what Mommy caught. Now let me know if I'm way off base. But I get having that person that you can go and call up and be like, I need some Bruce. Let's hang out. I have that too. I'm sure John has that too. I get that you know what the system is. I get that this is not the conversation that you want to be having today. Because trust me, when I woke up this morning, this is not the conversation I want to have either. But I can tell you right now, you got a lot of life to live. You're what, 18? Gonna be 19 in what? How many days? Two days. So I can I can understand that at this point in time, you are probably like, what the heck? You are faced with a situation where you got to figure out what happened, right? Where you're partying with your friend and the next thing you know, your whole world changed. Am I wrong? And man, I tell you, I've been doing this long enough and unfortunately I've had to deal with the same thing in my family too. And the hardest part about all of this is that no matter what is said and no matter what is done, it is done. And that happened, and we can't take it back. So before when I asked you to put yourself in my shoes, you're assigned to go talk to the entire family you need to tell them what happened. Could you do it? Could you tell them what happened? If you look them square in the eye, the entire family, can you sit there and tell them I have no idea what happened? couple drunk kids fucking around with a gun and nobody should have been handling a gun that night but it's you and I know that it's when you're there because his cards are still out of the bed man he's laying there with a bullet wound in his head right here he didn't do that to himself David and it was an accident I'm sure of it but that gunshot didn't come from outside it came from that gun that's sitting right next to him, but it's not in any kind of position that would have been from him. So I know he's not the one that fired that gun. It wasn't me. Who else would it be? I don't know. I have no idea. Who else was he sitting playing cards with and drinking beer with? Who else's know. hat is sitting there? My hat left the deck because I forgot it. You see, all these convenient stories you have, David, it's not true. It's so incredibly obvious that it's not true. And then some, you just decide to leave for no reason because he thought you had to work or whatever. Yeah. You know, I get it. You're scared. You've got to come up with a story. But now is the time to tell the truth. And you're not. You are not. 100% without a doubt. I am. I don't think you're a monster. But when you sit here and you can lie about your friend's death, that kind of makes me think differently about you. The responsible thing to do and the only thing to do when your best friend is dead is to tell the truth. Take some responsibility. I fucked up. We both fucked up. We were both stupid playing with guns, playing with a gun that was loaded and unloaded multiple times and everybody's drunk and but at the end of the day, it was you two in that room and only one of you came out. And that's you. Yeah, uh, we You left. Yeah, you left. Yeah, I'm sure of that. You left because you were scared because you just accidentally shot your friend in the head. Yeah, and it had to be terrifying. It has to be something that's etched into your brain and will live there forever. 
can continue to haunt you until you make it right. And the only way to make it right is to tell the truth. It was an accident, dude. We can work with you on that, okay? You were intoxicated. You didn't know it was loaded. You were fucking around. It wasn't intentional. You have a lot of life left to live. And if I can go to someone and say that, explain that, rather than have to rely on evidence as we move forward to prove that you did this, then, then that's what it'll be. But I need you to tell the truth and be mad. And you're not telling me the truth right now, so don't even say that. It's partial truth. A lot of what you said is the truth, but you're leaving a big part. Did you do it on purpose then? No. I know without a doubt, dude, that you fired a gun. Without a doubt, there's that's not a question. The question is, was it on purpose or was it on accident? So here's the problem though, okay? We, we don't just pull this out and just be like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna come in here and accuse David of doing this. So you say that was the last one. Was that? I I know how that would seem like, because that was the last person. Okay. So you can see how that looks suspicious, right? Yes, I know. Okay. Then see it. you tell us that you're wearing a savage shirt. The red shirt with savage on, right? Yeah, but I didn't wear that one. It was the tricks one. Okay. So. And then you say you're wearing the gray joggers, which we took, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, our crime lab and our detective bureau, we don't settle for, mm, this might have happened, or this may be how it happened. We will get the truth. I can promise you that, because I not only have to answer to my bosses, that's the little's heart. Like I said before, my job is a puzzle. And I have to take all these little pieces together to paint an entire picture to bring it back to the family and say, this is what happened. And we do through that, that through so many ways that to be honest with you, you and I both don't have the time to sit here and explain it to you. But I can promise you that every single item of clothing we took, whether you tried washing it or not, is going to go to the crime lab. And even if you did wash it, we have the ability to make sure that there's, if there is blood on there, we're going to find it. Believe it or not, you can't just wash away blood in a washer and dryer. Same thing with the pants that were in Jerry's room. We will send that to the crime lab. If there's gunshot residue on it, that's a problem. The blood that's on there that you can physically see on the pants. Like I said, those we tell the light one is fertile blood. Okay. But all the other clothing items that we took, the shoes, we're going to get imprints from the scene. Like, we don't just make this stuff up, okay? So this is where we need your help. I mean, I'll be on this whole entire time. So how to have? I don't know. I gave out everything that I know. But I can tell you right now, I was on scene for maybe five minutes. And I can tell you right now, it doesn't take a, a professional detective to tell him be a true himself. Somebody was in that room and somebody killed him. But we need to go and figure out if it was on purpose or if it was an accident. And that's what I believe happened, David. I believe that you and your friend fucking around. And it was an accident. So let me ask you this. Where did that bullet go? What bullet? You guys were playing around with the shirt. Where'd it go? That one. They cleaned it up and put it back in the clip. Okay. And the clip go back in the gun? Yeah. And then what happened? Anybody rack it? Because you and I both know if you've used the gun before. You rack it, and you might not think there's one in there. Shit happens. See it all the time. 
don't know if there was. I don't know. I don't even know if somebody else wrecked it. Good one. Yeah. But you see that where, where that could be a problem, right? If that did happen, or even somebody drops the slide on it and the magazine's in there. So if it's open and somebody puts the magazine in there and drops the slide, guess what? You're gonna have a problem with chamber. You think anybody would have known that? Pretty sure they would, but I but how would you know? I wouldn't. And that's what do you see what Nobody. the problem is on that? Nobody would. Exactly. I mean it's not like they send out a a big red symbol that hey, by the way, this gun is loaded. Right? I mean, I, from what I've heard, you've handled guns enough to know that a symbol doesn't come out saying, hey, by the way, they guns loaded. Most of the time, you can't even tell, right? Or no. Right? And that's a problem. So again, going back to let me know if I'm way off base here, I think that was a circumstance. From what I am, I'm, I'm a firearms instructor for the police department, so I handle guns all the time. And I can tell you right now that I know there's been several circumstances where you put the clip in and the slides open after we get done training, you drop the slide and you might not even know there's a problem in there. There's officers in there that fired a weapon. Thank goodness nobody was hurt, but that's why it, it, this isn't this isn't like a first degree intentional homicide investigation, dude. It's, it's not anything like that. I, I know you didn't mean for it to happen. And I want to be able to go to Troy's family and say that you're sorry. Because it was a terrible accident that you both played a role in. But I need to hear that from you. They need to hear that from you. So you're the only one that can tell this story now, man. You're the only one. What are you afraid of? You've got so much life left to live. Life that Troy doesn't have anymore. The best thing you can do for him and in his memory is explain what happened. Maybe you can educate some people around the community on gun safety things like that but this isn't this isn't the end of your life David. it doesn't have to be i don't want you to think that way because it's not you can make something positive happen from this We, we are not talking about the rest of your life in prison. You understand that, right? Not even close. I want to be sure that man, man, it's not enough man. And that's why we're here. He breaks up with his girlfriend a year ago. I think to myself, what the fuck went on? <laughs> I... I'm struggling with this too. We're gonna get the answers. We have two pieces of the puzzle right now that don't make any sense to us, and it points at you. Yeah, because I was the last one to leave. Yeah. But also, man to man, this is our last chance, period. There's no more redos. There's no more let's try this again and have a conversation. This is done. We don't just hang up our shoes and be like, you know what, it's day. I guarantee you we will be here 
until we know 100% the truth. We have a whole team that's going to work on this with us. We're talking a state crime lab. We're talking autopsy. We're talking gunshot residue. We're talking blood residue. We're talking everything. We have to go through it. So let me ask you this. Does any more at a point do you accidentally pull the trigger? your DNA could be on that trigger. Not at all. What happens if we find out different? Remember I explained that DNA can come from just your skin cells. What scares you most? What do you mean? What scares you most? What is it? Losing your family? Time? What? What do you think sisters get scared of this? I can tell you right now, when I sat in Jerry's room, I don't know if you heard any of it. It's like, what, you, what David's telling you is making sense. In my interview with Gary, I see David. He told me, I had no idea how his clothes got in my room. Clothes are always going wrong. But don't you think he would know that? And I, I'm, I'm guessing he's under stress right now, but man, I, I would be too. He doesn't have any reason to lie, but you know who does? Because you have every reason to lie. I was just hoping that wasn't the kind of man you were. We deal with people all the time who make mistakes. But the difference is they admit to their mistakes so they can move on. Otherwise, this is going to sit on you and it's going to eat you alive, dude. How terrifying was that moment? That's why you left. Did you see him? Uh -huh. What did his face look like? Really? When he got hit in the head with a bullet? I don't know. I wasn't there. If I left, he was still alive. Could you have called for help? The gun shot in his head. Yeah, you murdered David. Nobody else was there. Nobody else was in there. He was sitting playing cards with you. His cards are still stacked up on his bed. Nothing happened. It, after you, it, if you left, why would he still be sitting there fully dressed with beer all around him with a freaking card game going on his head? That makes zero sense. There's so they, much of what you said. We're playing a game and then and they'll tell him they'll go and go. And then, and then yeah, what? I don't, what I, don't, happened? I don't know what you did. What you did after that? After I left, he died. He died before you left. You've already established he didn't do this himself. I know that 100%. And I know 100% that it was you, but I don't know if it was an accident or if it was on purpose. Yeah. 
you know, somebody who takes a gun and shoots somebody in the head to purposely end somebody's life, to take somebody away from their family for the rest of their life is a monster. Is somebody who deserves to sit in a prison cell for the rest of their life because they don't have any regard for anybody's life. And I think you feel that same way. I can tell, and I've been talking to you for a couple hours now, and I can tell you, you're not that guy. And so I am, I am really struggling to understand because I have that same thing. There are two reasons here. One, you did it on purpose. Two, it was an accident and you're afraid of what's gonna happen if he tells the truth. And that's where we have a problem. I have no doubt in my mind that you were there. Jerry even is telling me like, yeah, uh, something's totally off here. Your sister is freaking out. Your family not only has to deal with everything that's going on at the house right now, but they're also dealing with this. And then that, that leaves us with two options. We either have to go to them and say, you did it on purpose, or this was all an accident. And I don't think you're that monster. Your family would forgive you, don't you think? What? Troy's family would forgive you. Because anybody can understand an accident can happen. Like I told you, there's cops here that have accidentally fired their gun. But if you maintain this lie, nobody's going to forgive you. And now that, I know you've watched TV. I know you've seen the news. I know you've seen all this stuff where you probably look at that and be like, that guy shot that guy or that guy stabbed the guy in the neck. What a monster. And I know you don't think you're a monster. I don't think you're a monster. But we're still stuck in that spot of, we have two options here. And right now, this is totally up to you. Very told you. So what is this gonna end as? You tell me you, you're, you're leaving out the biggest part. anything about how he died. So why are all these different inconsistencies? When I go back and look at the camera in the corner, you can show me getting picked up by someone. You should be, because I got picked up right there. Well, there's a difference between should be and yes. Yeah. And there's another one. Like, you, you can't even keep track of your own minds, dude. You and now, and now you're not even, like, it, what's bothering me now is that you don't even seem upset by this whole situation. That, I'm hurting, did you do I'm that? hurting, I'm hurting inside. Could have fooled me. I haven't seen you shed a tear the whole time you've been here. Maybe you did it on purpose. What you saw was so completely fucked up. It's got to be etched in your brain, and it will be for the rest of your life. And you got out of there so fast, you didn't even bring your hat. And 
and there's people in that house who heard that gunshot. Guess what? Kids that were there that heard it during the time where you're staying, you're there. There's everything's pointing to you, David. And you sitting here and denying it, making me think that maybe you don't care. Maybe you only care about yourself. Is that the truth? Do you only care about David? Do you give a shit about Troy and what his family is dealing with and gonna, gonna be dealing with for the rest of their lives? Then show me. Show me you care about Troy. What do you think? What do you think? Yo. Go from the guy who has no problem talking about fishing. There's no talk problem tell me about his nieces and nephews. And now, I'm talking to a guy that won't even look me in the eye. And when he's being asked about this, the only thing he can do is stare at the floor. And so I know for a fact that you are thinking something. I'm just hurting, dude. You're what? I'm just hurting. Okay, let's talk about it. I don't talk much to myself. Well, so what do we do, drink? I ain't gonna handle it either, right? I mean, I'm just straight with you. I can't just walk up to somebody and be like, oh yeah, this is what happened. And uh, I want to spill my guts about everything in my life. I can't do that. But what I can tell you is that I am also smart enough to know that this is something that I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. Because guess what? I am too. So we're going through this together. Because I had to see this too. Right now, it's the three of us in this room. And I am having a really hard time from the guy that I first met in this crappy situation that nobody wanted to happen in the first place to who I'm talking to right now. To the guy who I know stuff is going on here. And I, I can totally tell you, cause, and I'm sure you've seen it on TV, the cop cultures, we don't talk about it. Suck it up. Be a man about it. Just, you know what? Tough it up. I can tell you right now, the only thing that leads to is more problems. Usually it's drinking. Usually it's breaking something. Do you want to be that guy? I didn't. Do you know why I fish? Can you guess as to why I fish? It's the fucking money. Yeah. 100%. Can you guess what the other reason is? My family goes with me. Family's first. 
Because I guarantee you that my family, if I go up to them and be like, this is the shit I saw today, I'm probably going to start crying that bowl. I'm the same way. So that long story is to tell you that this shit ain't going to go away. So, I've been through quite a bit of crap here at the police department. I've seen shit that I hope nobody ever has to see. And I can tell you, I was you. I was sitting in the chair. I wouldn't look at anybody, wouldn't talk. But in here, the part that controls everything, your heart rate, your thoughts, your movements, everything was hurt. This is hard for me because I can see myself sitting in that chair doing the same exact thing you're doing right now. You know what I had to do? I had to talk. Now I'm not just saying that because we're in this situation. I'm saying that because I needed to. I'll be honest with you, I paid like 300 and some odd dollars for an hour session for some old guy in a cardigan to sit there and look at me as I sat there and I bawled my eyes out for an entire hour. I think I went through an entire box of Kleenex. But you know what, when I got done with that session, everything wasn't solved. Everything wasn't just magically fixed because I talked to somebody about it. But you know what? It started to heal this. The part that literally operates everything inside of you. And I know you have one. I can tell this is bugging the shit out of you. Because like I said, I was in that same seat that you are right now. Nothing we do here today is going to bring Troy back. She can at least help his family try to heal. Start to heal. Move along that path. It's never going to go away. You know that old saying, the monkey in the back? I get it. It is always going to be there. Always something that you are going to have to deal with as a person. Because that's what you are. You're not that monster that goes out and just kills anybody he wants because he wants to. I can see it in your eyes. Touch the head. Were you pointing it out? Nobody or were you just holding it? Nobody was pointing it. Nobody. Okay. I like that. You kind of did the right thing for Troy. Yeah. If you're over, if you're over there every weekend, we have to be pretty close to that family, huh? 
and they're comfortable uh, to let you come into their home? No, I would be, because I can tell you right now, ain't, ain't random people coming in my house. Right? And I'm sure you wouldn't allow that to happen to your nieces and nephews. Because I'm guessing you love them. And I'm also guessing you love Troy. He was your bro, right? We all need him. Whether it's a drinking buddy, whether it's a fishing buddy, whether it's a hunting buddy, what have you, we all need bros. That same family that let you in their house is asking the same questions we have. Because they're the family, you ain't gonna lie to them, right? And not only that, there's people who know you best, so if you lie to them, they're gonna know. Right? You see them the most. So if you were standing in front of them today, right now, they are standing in front of you. You can look them in the eye and tell them, I have absolutely no idea what happened. I'll believe that for a minute, not even a little bit. Are you familiar with what a polygraph examination is? David? Mm -hmm. Lie detector test, have you ever heard of that? What is it? What do you know it is? Usually a detective, somebody's lying here telling the truth, right? So say we were to put you in that test. I ask you the same question. Don't sound too confident. What voice is breaking? Do what? What voice is breaking? Okay. You scared? So why is voice breaking? What part is breaking you? Should never have, right? Danny. Can you imagine what his family's going through? Here. Only worse, David, because they don't know the truth. So much worse. Because somebody took their son's life. And they don't know who that is right now. But I do. You do. He does. But they need to hear that from you. They deserve to hear that from you. Troy would do the same thing. Can you imagine? God forbid Troy's fucking around with a gun, accidentally shoots you in the head. He would do this. He would tell the truth to your family. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so too. for him, right? Okay, do, do you want us to have Troy's family come down here? So you can tell them? What's going to be the easiest for you? 
because you know what happened. That's not even a question. The question is, what's it going to take for you to tell him? Were you pointing at him, David? How are you holding him? We weren't pointing at nobody. Okay, well, how are you holding it? I need to know how this happened. Okay. And at what point did it go off? You don't know because you blocked it out of your memory or help me understand. We've already established you're there. It's you and him in a room. He ends up with a gunshot wound in, in, in the head and he's dead. And here you are. You're the only one that knows the truth, David. I don't. You do. A hundred percent you do. There is zero question in my mind. If you're going to sit there and let the family of a man that you just said you loved suffer, then maybe I've read you all wrong. You've taken responsibility for your actions in the past, right? talked about some stuff that happened in Florida. People make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes. He makes mistakes. We all do. We all do. And if that's what happened, that's understandable. But we need to hear that from you. We have to hear it. for the truth to come out of your mouth, David. What are you worried about? Are you worried about yourself? Are you worried about what people are going to think? you're trying to hide your emotions from us. So the whole time I've been sitting here studying what you do when we ask you questions. When you're afraid of answering a question, you touch your lip. You my lips are getting dry. Hold on, let me finish. When we ask you a question that refers to this incident, you shake your leg, specifically your left leg. Since we started asking these questions about being at the incident, you've sat in that same spot. And every time after you answer a question, you move your right foot. Those are all things to me that I pay attention to because you know what that means? That means that you are afraid to tell us the information because if you go from a guy who is sobbing crying with Jerry to somebody who is sitting here with a blank stare on his face, afraid to tell us the truth. I 
I know this. These are things that we're not just making them up, that we're being like, hey, we're just going to sit here and... A lot of this is common sense stuff. And I don't understand. I don't know what it is. I think it's a fear of the consequences. And that's something I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about this whole incident. I want to talk to you about what you're thinking about. Now, let me tell you, I can tell you that you would much rather be fishing than sitting in this room. I was going on a camp trip this weekend. So there are other things that I would have liked to know. But we're here and we're here now. Something happened, and we can't take it back. I can't change it. Jen can't change it. You can't change it. It is done. You're going to be 19 in two days. You know what that means to me? That means to me that we have a 19-year-old kid who's scared shitless about the rest of his life. So let's just address this elephant in the room. All of these different things we've talked about. I can tell you right now, there's a large majority of the stuff that we've talked about, you haven't told me the truth. I know that. So if you were in my shoes and we're having the same conversation and you know for a fact that I'm lying to you, would you trust anything I said to you? Probably not, right? Mm -hmm. You believe me even if you know I was lying to you? No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. All right. Say you have a significant other, right? and they lie to you, you would still trust them. Put yourself a choice shoes. You told me for a fact he was hurt by what had happened to him. And now he's not even around to talk about it. Because his best friend put a bullet through his head. And now his best friend's like, I don't know. Best friend is looking pretty selfish right now because he's only caring about himself. And that only makes this whole situation so much worse. If that were even possible. Are you even sorry? Are you? I'm sorry. I can see it on your face. Can I go to Troy's family and tell them you're sorry? Please, at least give them that. If you're Troy's friend, you need to show me that you're his friend. His best friend. By telling him the truth about the accident. I know. I know it was. So I need you to tell me. Please. That had to be terrifying. But tell him. help you. 
Pick it up your chest. Talk about what? Can't keep it up. I already said it was Are you pointing it at him? Holding it, how do you know it was an accident? Because nobody wants to shoot with it. No, but I know. So explain what happened. I help you, you have to help yourself first. And we have to get Troy's name. You said it was an accident. So that. talking about more times that ain't even that home. Help me understand. So you weren't pointing it at him. Did you not know it was loaded? Just pointing it. Okay. Did you know that it was loaded? Was there one in the chamber? That's what I'm guessing. Because that there would have been nothing going on. You wouldn't be here right now. Right? Where was the clip? Was it in the gun? You explaining what happened means all the difference in the world to me but we can explain it to Troy's family. But they know that it was an accident. Tell me what you do remember. I was on the bed. I grabbed it. Hold it down. And Troy asked for it. I took out the clip and I ended up just the gun. And he asked for the clip. But I ended up with the clip. And he ended up handing it back to me. I didn't know it was loaded. I didn't point it at him or anything. Back to see if it was like a little bit. I guess that's where I accidentally pulled the trigger. He still holding the clip then, or when he gave it back to you, was it just the gun, or was it the gun with the clip? 
Maybe we can split it. Let's see. 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 Let's
Sing in the same way. Yeah, we Huge difference between being a man and saying an accident. So after you got back home as far as the clothes, you know the clothes that you were wearing? Red salmon shirt? No, 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 no. So you put them in the washer? No, you don't have the tricks, man. Did you notice any blood on you? You love When? Oh, way back. Which one do we know? So I'm sorry, but I want to make sure I have this right. Um, tell me again, who's holding it first when you guys are sitting there? At first, it was just on the bed. It grew up to oh, just holding it. And then he asked for it, so I ended it. So. When did they click it? Tell me. <laughs> Whenever I handed it to him, then he asked for it. Did so you get the clip out? I took it out, and then he had the best before the clip. Yeah, after that, I went to the restroom, came back. And then, and then the girl was gone again. So it was loaded or anything. I don't know if it was playing with it, fucking it or anything. And then I'm checking with it. Do it. Instead of getting to it. So he could have done something in the bathroom when you were in the bathroom with him. Do you want to talk to his family? Do you want to have an opportunity or do you want to wait?
Sick. I feel it's being instead of it. It's a very natural thing. On survivor's guilt. Honestly, I don't. Oh, I was in lightning before. sources. go through with it. Where did you put it? What? Where did you put the guy?
you want us to tell David or to tell Troy again? Excellent. I'm sorry. We wish it was you. Didn't know there was one in the chamber. Was the bedroom door open or closed? Really too. Door did you go out? Same one you came in? Is there anything that helps you remember what time it was? Do you have an estimate? Like, plus, like earlier, like I said, probably like four or five. What time did you get? Was your phone really dead? Yeah. Put it in a charge and I didn't connect it with the original charger that came with the phone. And it never charged until I connected the original charger to it. And then it just started charging. Did you actually want Just left a couple hours. You wake up and think for a second that maybe it was all just a bad dream. Did you really try to call and text for Yeah. Why? See if it wasn't true. And all the clothes that we have are really the clothes that you were wearing. Great, dark gray chuggers and red shirt shoes. And those are the right shoes. Really turtle blood on the light gray ones. And is that related to this at all, or that look? You had that little cut on your that one. Yeah, that it's from the book. It's from the book. Yeah. 
Is there anyone you want to call right now? situation is give the family somebody knowing number one that Troy didn't kill himself number two that it was an accident <laughs> In that video you showed me was a happy guy. Love soda left, or you need water. Bring me something up. I just know that. Yeah, you want water? Or what? Water's all. Are you asking for a beer? A little missed if we're all coming up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't help it. David, think, things have changed for us a little bit now. So as you can imagine, we're going to be going to jail tonight, okay? Men! No. I know that nothing is too. You can match him. The other side of the spectrum is totally for the right. I don't want to know how you don't think it's going to end up that way. I think it's going to be like this. Everybody else is going to be like shit. Yeah. So there's still a couple questions that I have, and we actually have firearms obviously non functioning. I'd like to maybe have you demonstrate if you'd be willing to do that. So we can have a better understanding. And then, uh, but before I do that, um, I have to read you your rights now. So, you have the right to remain silent and anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions that they have him or her present with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. 
you understand all those rights, David. Realizing that you have these rights, you will need to continue talking. So, understand. What is it that you don't understand? I just, with the gun here, help me understand a lot of your Well, it's important to me to make sure that I fully understand. what I do with the gun. We happen to have one here that's obviously not a functioning that would possibly demonstrate. Well, it would change for you, so I'm just trying to be upfront and honest and do my job to the best of my ability. And that's why I want to make sure you understand. Back here. about you and I care about how this story ends. Hey, did it end how long is this going to be? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. It's not over yet. It's only just the beginning of everyone's healing process. We want to react right Are you still willing to talk to me about a couple follow up questions I have? Okay. What? I guess I didn't make it clear. Uh, I didn't clearly ask you, like, were you sitting, were you standing, that kind of you understanding your rights first. And if I ask you any questions that you don't like, you can certainly stop at any time. You can always shut up. Okay. 
You understand it, right? Yes. Really, you have those right to answer the question about what your position was in the world, and like how far away you were. Would you be willing to answer those questions? Want to take a break? Have a smoke or something? How did you not get what I explained, what I said? I get it. It just would help me. You showed me. But if you don't want to, I understand. Ball's in your court, David. You don't want to do the demonstration or you don't want to talk about it? Okay. Would you be willing to answer those other follow-up questions that I have? Which was? Were you sitting or standing and how far away were you? And was he sitting or standing? He was sitting. Could you demonstrate what you were doing? He was sitting on his bed. I was like, almost like at the end of his bed, but not like at the end, but like the side bed. The side bed. Could you draw a diagram? Like, where you were? Where is his bed? Yeah. You can see him over here. Where is, is this the wall? Yeah. Right yeah. Air conditioner unit? What was it? Air conditioner Window. TV. Table. And then I'll just put it over here. I was sitting right there. How was, how was he sitting over there? A couple feet on the side of the bed? Did he, did he throw up again? Because he had a little bit of throw up on his sweatshirt. Is that just from when he threw up out of the window? Or? Was it a little stain? Yeah. Because uh, if it was, it was a winter being a troll. So that was there for a little bit. When he threw up when everybody was there. Yeah. He was trying to demonstrate shock to black guy. He threw up. What did the steam look? Did it look like it was just wet? And yeah, the first, like, it looked wet. And then Ricky's like, hey, you got, I don't know, I think it was 
and then it said that you get some nice shirt and you can just take just wipes it off. And then when you were sitting on the bed, did you notice anything that like, was the same? Did it appear to be wet? Or did it appear that anything was there or did it look like puke? I don't know. The one we see doing when you came back in the room from the bathroom. Well, I know that I came back. I would see them. It wasn't it was closer to him, or was it towards the end of the bed? It seemed like it was closer to him. It didn't really seem like it was closer to you, too. So did you step back after you grabbed it, or did you step forward, or how did that work out? When I got that, I stepped back. When you wrapped your fingers around to check it, did you wrap all of your fingers around, or did you just do it from the back, or how did you do that? I was putting it sideways. I mean, I uh, got from the back, you know, shaked a little bit. Okay. Do you have a canter at all so you could see the like the chamber or anything like that? I mean, you could just, like, you know, it was okay. sideways, so I could shake a little bit. Yeah. That, I assume at that point is when you're at the bank. Do you know what happened at that point? aware that in some circumstances that you may hear it before you feel that's what happened. Yeah, I heard it. I looked up to him I said, like, you know, like, you got, like, scared. Thank you. Right away, or? I did it. Go and um, look at him. What did you do with that? So if you're standing by the end of the side of the bed, you just walked out the door, didn't manipulate anything or anything like that, right? You don't have to move anything, just out of the way. And you don't move. Just walk out. Is there a safety mechanism on the door? Are you familiar with what kind of gun it is? Are you familiar with what kind of gun it was? So, I guess the reason why I'm asking though is that um, depending on the gun, firearm, there are different safety mechanisms on that. Do you believe it was on the trigger? Do you believe it has a safety mechanism as far as you're aware? Anything? I don't know. I heard someone saying that it doesn't have a trigger of uh, safety. That was discussed when all of you were together? Yeah, but I don't know. Okay. Do you recall kind of what the trigger looks like? 
which recalls there were two parts of the trigger, or just one solid capital shape. Why is that all work? Still need something positive. Oh. Being with Butler could have just done it. Let's go. So, first off, I'm going to start this conversation by saying, "Who did write it?" Okay, it's a shitty situation that I know you didn't want to be in, but we're here. Okay. So, like Jen said, you are your own jail. Okay. Um, the thing I'm going to say with this is that I know you were in a crappy situation, and I know it was an accident. Um, you know, obviously, we still have to do our job. And it's not the end of your life. Okay. So, like I said before, you can talk to somebody about it, do it. This, this is something that, you know, like, like we've said, you're just the beginning. Okay. So, um, with that, this is Jenna. She's going to take you into the jail. Um, if you have any questions, I'll give you my card. You can get a hold of me if you want. Um, other than that, let's get more right on anyway. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Your back pocket then. Is that cool? 
So it sounds like you had pretty cooperative this whole time and stuff. Unfortunately, if we're going to my squad, I tried to put you in half cups. <laughs> I know. Some people don't like that so much, but I just want to let you know what's going on, okay? So you guys still got to put in close, even if. Or transportation, like, not even going for jail. Every time, man. Why is that? Are we in this unit? They're not going to jail? Yeah. Oh, no, like, that's not going to jail. Like, if oh. I have to give some, like, a ride home, I've been drinking too much, I'm just giving a ride home. I don't know. If it's jail, though, that has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have anything sharp in your pockets at all? No. Okay. Did you guys do it? So, okay. Yeah. You were comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as long as you search them down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, these guys <laughs> The confession came after nearly four hours of interrogation. Lieutenant Holtz and Stetzer were only able to extract the confession by sticking to their theory, namely that David had shot Troy on accident in a drunken stupor, and by constantly hammering at David's weak points, particularly with regard to his and Troy's friendship. While David did attempt to mislead the detectives by throwing out hints that Troy was suicidal, the detectives didn't bite. David Anselmo was ultimately sentenced to eight years of prison for homicide.